Sinus surgery is required for lots of conditions, but we can divide them easily into two things, nasal polyps inside the sinus uh, or sinus infection. We call it chronic sinusitis. When patients have congestion, blocking of the nose, thick discharge, some pressure around here and here for a long time, and it has not responded to medicines, usually sprays and antibiotics, and they still have it. So that's chronic sinusitis. Some of these patients have polyps, which are swelling inside the nose, which make it really blocked, sometimes completely blocked. So these are the patient required sinus surgery. And it's very common. A lot of patients, a lot of people get sinus infection after having multiple colds. Sinus surgery involves uh, general anesthesia, meaning the patient has to be completely asleep. Although some surgeons would do it with just local anesthesia, like sprays and so on, but I prefer to do it with general anesthesia. And we use cameras and endoscope. So there's no cut, that's an important thing. We don't cut anywhere. We use endoscope that goes through the nostrils and special equipment that goes inside to enlarge the natural drainage of the sinuses. Because that is the reason we do the sinus surgery, because the drainage is blocked. So we create better drainage of the sinuses and remove any polyps with the special equipment through the endoscope. When we finish, we put a little tiny pack that usually dissolves, and then that's it. Like any operation inside the nose, uh, you can have bleeding. So most patients will actually have some bleeding anyway. Severe bleeding from uh, the nose after sinus surgery is rare, but it, if it happens, it has to be treated by various uh, treatments, depending on how heavy it is. Some patients can get infections from the sinus operation itself, and then we have to put them in antibiotics. But a very rare, extreme rare complication, but they are serious. Because the sinuses are very near the eye and the brain, you can have complications around these areas, for example, hemorrhage or bruising around the eye, not damage to the eyesight, that is extremely, extremely, extremely rare. And from the brain, the patients can have leak of the fluid from around the brain because the bone between the sinus and the brain is very thin, and that can happen and that has to be repaired. Luckily, these are extremely rare, we don't see them that much, and if they happen, they have to be treated. Uh, other complications, of course, again, rare is decrease or loss of the sense of smell, but in the majority of the time, they come back. So sinus surgery is very valuable in how, to, how, how long time it takes or how long it takes, because you can just work on one sinus or all the sinuses, and also depends how severe the condition is. So it can take less than an hour in some patients, it can take two hours or even three hours in some. I would say an average in the groups of my patients maybe it would be less than uh, two hours, it would be an hour, an hour and a half in the majority of the time. And the patient is fully asleep, and then they go home after that. Success of sinus surgery is very high and depends on the condition. In patients with chronic sinusitis, meaning chronic infection of the sinuses, when you open the drainage, it's above 90%, meaning that the patient will be really clear for a very long time. And even if they are some of the out of the 10%, usually they're a bit better. For the nasal polyps, it's a bit different because polyps can come back. So it's less high than, it's less than 90%, maybe 80%. A patient with nasal polyps always have to use some sprays in the nose that drops a long time after the surgery to prevent them coming back. Usual recovery is not too long. In the first 10 days or so, the patient should take it easy and not do too much exercise or anything like this. And that's when they felt congested, they feel congested in a bit of blood in the nose and so on. After 10 days to 14 days, most people feel fine to get back to work and so on. They may still a little bit congested still, which improves a little bit further in the following few weeks. But in general, after a month, all the normal activities can be done again. It's very good uh, that to have a sinus operation if you have chronic sinusitis. Most people don't realize when they have chronic sinusitis that they're a bit tired because that's low grade inflammation infection in the sinus and the nose. When you improve the sinus drainage, one thing improves is the breathing in the one, and then you get less discharge. But something else that people realize later on, the level of the tiredness, they feel that they're not as tired as before. So that's a very important part of the quality of life. A lot of patients' sense of smell will also improve, which makes a big difference. Some patients, because they have very severe blocking from polyps, they'd be snoring as well, and that also can improve after sinus surgery. 